Hello, and welcome to AIM International's Preparatory Tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content process and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is Business Process Management, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association, helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Capture and Manage Knowledge domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, We'll discuss the process audit and several different approaches to capturing and analyzing audit information. In April of 2007, management guru Michael Hammer wrote in the Harvard Business Review that a, quote, revamped business process needs employees to focus on a broad common outcome. If the organization measures performance as it's always done, it will reward people for focusing on narrow functional goals. How can the process live up to its potential under those circumstances? With that, Hammer introduced the notion of the formal process audit, which picks up and runs with the concept by focusing on outcomes rather than procedures, which are very task-oriented. Taking it to the next step, Hammer then codified his thinking into what he calls the Process and Enterprise Maturity Model, or PEMM, a framework for evaluating an organization's position on the process improvement scale. This model encompasses five process enablers, which pertain to individual processes, and four enterprise capabilities, which apply to entire organizations. The process enablers are design, how comprehensively the process to be executed is specified. Performers, the people who execute the process, particularly in terms of their skills and knowledge. The owner, a senior executive who has responsibility for the process and its results, infrastructure, the information and management systems that support the process, and metrics, the measures the company uses to track the process's performance. The enterprise capabilities are leadership, it's the senior executives who support the creation of processes, culture, the values of customer focus, teamwork, personal accountability, and a willingness to change, expertise, skills in and a methodology for process redesign, and governance, mechanisms for managing complex projects and change initiatives. These items are notable not just for their effect on process outcomes, but also, more directly in our context, for how well they map to long-accepted best practices for information management, like securing an executive sponsor, focusing on governance, measuring wherever possible, paying heed to the people and not just the technology, and changing the organizational culture. All of these are accepted as givens by most thought leaders, even though they're not always adhered to. The instrument Hammer uses to capture his audit information is the spreadsheet shown on this slide. Basically, for each cell outlining the maturity level of a particular characteristic, the analyst conducting the audit applies a color code in the corresponding box to the right, according to the degree to which he believes the characteristic is true. The placement and number of red marks make it immediately apparent where the major points of focus ought to be. Hammers isn't the only model in existence, of course. Here's another, this one from Bearing Point. Developed a few years before Hammers, in fact, it takes a somewhat more infrastructural approach, but it asks the same basic questions. How ready is your organization to take process improvement to heart, and where do you go from here? The gurus at consulting firm Transition Support offer yet another variation on the theme. Directed by David Hoyle and John Thompson, the company offers a number of key points to capture while reviewing, improving, and measuring processes. Identify the process's objectives and identify the factors affecting success. Establish how the objectives will be achieved and verify that appropriate controls are in place. Establish the competencies and capabilities required 
to deliver the process outputs and that they're being assessed effectively. Establish what results are being achieved and how they're being measured, and then verify their integrity. Establish that performance, efficiency, and effectiveness are being reviewed and pursued. So you see, the same themes. Measurement, technology, people, but in a slightly different style. What these and other tools have in common is the objective to chart an organization's progress towards the goal of fielding excellent processes. More strategic than the task efficiency centered approaches of the conventional wisdom variety, these speak to the depth of the commitment to making fundamental adjustments to the way work gets done, including changes to what sometimes are long standing management structures and reporting relationships. Now that you've completed this module, you may next wish to review the one covering how roles and responsibilities play into process routing. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.